Hello everyone, my name is Keith, and in this video we're talking about the Ulanzi drone strobe light. My favorite time of day to fly is golden hour. It just has a nice soft light where I can shoot a house, a building, or a wedding venue with nice diffused soft light with long shadows and everything just looks really good. One of the downsides is to flying a drone and being in position when the sun rises, the FAA in the United States considers that twilight up to a half hour before the sun rises or a half hour after the sun sets. That is where the Ulanzi drone strobe light comes in. This was engineered to be visible conveniently up to three statute miles away on a clear day, and it has three different modes and three different colors for each mode. The colors are white, green, and red, and each of the three colors have three different modes. The first one is continuous, and then a quick strobe and a slow strobe. Depending on which lighting mode you're going to use is going to dictate how much battery life the drone strobe light has. If you are using the continuous mode from a full charge battery, you will only get two hours of use out of this strobe light. However, if you are using a continuous mode, you can get up to 20 hours of battery life from this from a full charge. And included in the box is a USB-C charger that you can use in a laptop wall outlet or how I typically used it from a USB power bank. The drone strobe light itself is actually pretty large for only being six LEDs, but since these LEDs are so bright, uh, maybe they had to make the overall unit larger to accommodate the battery or circuitry or something, but the overall length is almost two inches. It's like 1.8 inches. I would like to see this be shrunk down a little bit just to save some real estate on the front of the drone. But that being said, it only weighs 14 grams. So this isn't really going to affect your overall flight with your drone, but it would be nice to just get this as small as possible. In my use, I found that the white light was the brightest and the red light was kind of the dimmest and the green light was somewhere between the two. But definitely the white light was the brightest, so this is what I used when I was running the Ulanzi strobe light on my Mavic 2. This light would work on the Mavic Mini, but uh, when I was filming this, it is December in Ohio, so filming outside, this drone is only rated to fly in 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was about 20s, 28 when I was filming this video I'm gonna show you in a second. So I never put this on my drone outside of just flying it around in the house just to make sure it would take off. But the Mavic 2 Pro with the this strobe light handled phenomenally and I didn't even realize it was on the front of the drone. For my flight test of the Ulanzi drone strobe light, I was using my Mavic 2 Pro and I put this on the front of my drone and was able to fly out over Lake Erie so I could just fly in a straight line and not be obstructed by any trees, cars, people, anything like that. So just to be safe, I flew straight out over the lake. I was able to find an elevated pier and I was flying the drone below the elevation of the pier. So I was about 100 feet off the ground and the drone was flying at about 50 feet. I was able to look down and see the light on the front of the drone. And uh, a, a, just a quick aside here, another question that I get a lot about the lights that come stock on the drone, just the ones that flash, the indicator lights, People often think that those lights are good enough to be seen from three statute miles away. And I would not recommend relying on those lights to be seen in any kind of distance at night. I was also kind of keeping an eye on when the lights on the drone came invisible to me and I really couldn't see them past a thousand or 1500 feet. They became a little muddy and at 2000 feet, I definitely couldn't see them. So 2000 feet, 50 feet under me straight out, I could no longer see them. However, when I stopped and I was hovering with the drone, I was able to see this front light very clearly. 
and I was also able to see the outline of my drone. So I was able to fly out an additional 2,000 feet where I lost track of my Mavic 2 Pro and I told myself I wanted to get about 5,000 uh, feet out to try to make it an even mile, but I made it with the light decreasing. When I lost sight of the outline of my drone against the water, I told myself I would just bring it home, but I was still able to see the white continuous light on the front of the drone very clear. So. If I was flying my drone without the drone strobe light, I would have completely lost my drone. Well, I would have lost it in the sky. I would just fly straight up and straight back to me. But that would have been a little nerve wracking to be honest. With the drone strobe light, I was still able to locate my drone. But one key factor in locating my drone was I was higher than my drone so I could see the front white light here. If you are flying your drone high up in the air and the light is on top, you can't see the top of your drone. You can only see the bottom of your drone. So when I was doing my test, I made sure that I was able to see the top side of the drone. And if I was to lose sight of it, I would still have the front light to guide myself by. An interesting thing when I was flying this out, uh, I was still higher than my drone, but the farther I got out and I was pushing the stick straight forward, my drone pitched forward and the back of my drone actually was higher than the front of my drone. So for a split second, I was no longer seeing that white light of my drone because I was facing this way. And the first time that happened, I was I, I thought my drone went into the river or the lake or something. But whenever I let off the sticks and the drone hovered out, I could see that white light again and I my heart stopped beating so quickly. So uh, that is another thing to note. Whenever you're flying quickly, even if you think you're above your drone, the back of the drone goes higher than the front whenever you're flying quickly. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And uh, one thing, as soon as that happened to me, I told myself I need to buy one of these and put it on the bottom of my drone. So if that does happen, I know when my drone is accelerating and I see, we'll say, I have a red strobing light on the bottom of my drone. So if I see a red strobing light, I know I'm accelerating farther away. And if I see a white continuous light or a green continuous light or whatever you would like to set this one, I know that the front of the drone is parallel and I'm hovering in place. So that is something that uh, the FAA doesn't require that. But I think for myself, if I'm going to continue to fly my drone at twilight, which I am, I will probably end up buying another one of these and set it to a different color and light pattern, put it on the bottom of my drone, which is kind of going to be tricky because the bottom of the Mavic 2 Pro has a ton of lights and sensors. Maybe I can fit it right here. But that will be something really helpful for me to be able to tell what my drone is doing if I were to lose it during twilight. Whenever you apply in the United States for a 107.29 daylight operations waiver, you need to write in your emergency plan if you lose track of your drone in the night sky. I was flying over Lake Erie, so it was really easy for me to keep track of my drone. There were no other lights around. It was just one white light in the distance, and I knew that was my drone. But if you are flying in a urban environment or anywhere with, I mean, more than just the drone, the light on your drone, it would be very beneficial to have an emergency plan, even if you're not applying for that 107 waiver, even if you're not flying at night, it flying during twilight, it is still easy to lose track of your drone if the remote pilot in command or the visual observer isn't insanely diligent about keeping track of the drone in that dark sky, especially if there's other lights around. So just having multiple drone strobe lights could be a good emergency plan if you plan on flying your drone at night with a waiver 
or during civil twilight before or after sunrise or sunset. One of the things that I do not like about the strobe light is that the on off switch, the mode selector and the color selector, it's one button on the back of the unit. So if you have your strobe light attached to your drone and you say, okay, I'm ready to take off, you, there's no buttons on the front that allow you to actually turn the device on. You have to take it off, turn it on, and then you can put it back on your drone. And then to turn it off again, you have to take it off, power it down, and then you can put it back on your drone. Um, that is, it was probably an easy engineering decision to put it on the bottom or something, but from a usability standpoint, I would love to see the button be moved to the top of the drone strobe light. Another con that I kind of uh, hinted at earlier was the overall size of the drone strobe light. Uh, at the end of the day, this is just six LEDs that a Velcro attaches to your drone. So I'm really not sure at why the size of this is so big. I would love to see if this could be a little bit smaller, especially if I'm going to put one on the bottom of my Mavic 2 Pro or on the bottom of my Mavic Mini. There's really not a good place to put this right now, but if it was just a little bit smaller, just as big as the LEDs were, that would be awesome. It would be just small enough that it could fit anywhere on your drone, but it would still be bright enough that it would still have that three statute miles of visibility that the FAA is wanting. So that was my experience with the Ulanzi drone strobe light. I really am happy that I have a strobe light now that I can reliably fly during twilight and I can apply for a 107.29 daylight operations waiver in the United States. I would like them to be a little bit smaller. I would like them to move the button to the front and make the overall footprint just a little bit smaller. But for a version one costing $25, uh, I can't really complain. It is a pretty nice little package to have just tucked away in your bag. So I would like to thank Ulanzi for reaching out and letting me review a Ulanzi drone strobe light. And I would also like to say thank you to them because they emailed me about a $25 strobe light and I was actually looking at a UU rig cage for my A7 III and they sent me out a cage and waterproof light so that I can film all of this uh, B-roll footage at night. And I'm a really big fan of having a cage on my camera. Uh, I came from a line of Sony or uh, Canon cameras before my Sony camera and I filmed skateboarding with them and I always had a cage on my camera. It would add a little bit more protection, but also because I could fit a light, a microphone and a handle all on my camera and I could hold it low to the ground and it would be uh, able to support all of that weight of everything. So right now I'm using the UU rig cage to film this. I have uh, the handle, I have a microphone for scratch audio. I have a light on there. I mean, I'm not using the uh, waterproof light right now, but it is on there. If I wanna go film in the field, I can pick up that camera and that is well fine enough to go film uh, with my Rode mic, just go film some stuff in the field and I don't have to worry about mounting all this stuff to my camera. It's just ready to go. So thank you, uh, Ulanzi and UU Rig for uh, reaching out, supporting me, and also giving me more stuff that I can make better videos. So thank you guys for sticking around to the end. If you're new here, consider subscribing. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.